Thursday, November 20th, 2014. And here are some of today's trends in the news. Well, you know, I'm not too good at numbers. And uh, yesterday I said, make sure you sign up for the conference because there are only a few spaces left. And I said December 16th rather than December 6th. So it's December 6th. Only a few spots left. We'd love to have you there to see history before it happens. On to the markets. Whoop, they're a little flat today. Not much going on. And it's the same story around the world. But Earl's up a little bit, and so is gold. Gold's going back toward that 1,200 mark. Here's one of the reasons why. Russia boosted gold reserves last month as prices declined. Whew. They really nailed it. Holdings rose 37.6 million ounces, or about 1,169.5 tons, the central bank said. The nation has been buying bullion as prices slumped to 38% below the record set in September 2011. So, the other reason that they say what's holding down gold prices is that over there in Switzerland they're going to have a vote very shortly on whether or not the central bank will hold at least 20% of its assets in bullion. And right now the vote looks like it may lose. But when you read this, it doesn't make sense to me. But hey, about 47% of the voters are, see, are seen as voting no. Ah, isn't 47 less than 50%? Ah, I told you I'm not too good at numbers. And on to some other economic news. China aims to boost lending for firms. Oh, yes. China rolled out a series of measures to help struggling companies amid a slowing economy, vowing to boost lending. You know, that is all P. That's bullshit. They all do the same thing, man. They keep pumping out the dough to keep the Ponzi scheme going. Just a different name for the same scheme. The government said it would give more flexibility to banks in their loan-to-deposit ratio, blah, 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 blah. Because China's factory activity stalls in November. It's a recovery. It's not a stall. And you want to help them banks out? You got to, because it's bankism. Senators rip banks' trading strategies. Story today in the Wall Street Journal. The U.S. Senate report on commodity market activities at big Wall Street banks accuses the firms of being so powerful they were able to influence prices, gain trading advantages, and put the broader financial system at risk by entering risky businesses such as uranium trading and gold production. And it goes on. The whole game is rigged, man. Top trend, 2015, bankism, not capitalism. Need more proof? Here's some more. Financial Times. Commodities deal exposed banks to catastrophic risk, says senators. Probe, who they probe, condemns oil and metal investments by Goldman, Morgan Stanley, and J.P. Morgan. And it goes on, man. The entire game is rigged. There is no government. Get it in your head. It's a banking multinational takeover. How much more of this stuff do you have to read? How much more evidence do you have to see before you can call a spade a spade, a crook a crook, a bankster a bankster? Don't forget to vote. Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley exposed themselves to catastrophic financial risk, environmental disasters, and market manipulation by investing in oil, metals, blah, 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 blah. We're going to have an investigation and get to the bottom of this. Yeah, just like you got to that bottom of that guy yesterday, that 350-pound cat man sitting on all them stakes at Walmarts. Nothing, nothing, nothing will happen. And it's not only in the United States, 
Name the country. Name the criminals. Name the political slime. Yeah, the parasitic pansies that destroy a country, destroy joy, destroy beauty for their sick trip. Here's one for you. Graph probe sets back Brazilian leader. An alleged corruption scandal at Brazil's largest company is threatening President Rousseff's ability to govern Latin America's biggest nation. Up oh, right next to her. Hey, your neighbor, Mexico's first lady, tries to end scandal. Yep, she said she would sell a presidential family mansion that is at the center of a growing scandal of allegations of conflict, of, of all the allegations of criminality, immorality. Can any... Now, keep reading the language. Oh, got another couple of cancellations because people said, I'm too negative, and they don't like my language. Suck it up, Jack. Go in for that probe. Hey, you could be a prober. Why not, huh? Keep swallowing the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Buy the baloney. They're destroying the world in front of us, and it's going to get worse. Huh? particularly if you got some dough to put in the banks. Commerce Bank to charge depositors. Yeah, remember last week? Commerce Bank was the other group of slimy banking bastards that the people in Europe had to bail out for their lousy deals. But everybody forgets that one. Now if you got dough coming in and you want to get interest on it, hey, screw you. Give us your money and you'll pay to keep it there. That's what this says. But... Why not? It's bankism. It makes perfect sense. Multinational staples. Hey, it's not being held together too well. Plans to close more stores. 170 stores in North America in 2014, up from 140. It was already closed 127 and aims to have 225 stores Closed by the end of 2015. The son of a bitch has put all of the small stationers out of business. The level of product that we get is so limited in quality and diversity because the multinationals control the whole deal. Break the chains. Anytime you can, support local. They will collapse under the weight of their massive debt and thin profit margins. The proof is here. And what else do we have? Oh, this, this was a shock to me. Huh. It was even in the Financial Times on CNBC. Huh. I don't believe a word of it. Banking culture promotes cheating. What? They did a study. The business culture in the banking industry weakens the will to be honest, according to a new study by university in Switzerland, which states that a healthier attitude to the truth is crucial to restore reputation in the sector. How's that for... Bullshit level, DEFCON 5! How about calling them gangs, criminal gangs, that are sick son-of-a-bitches that are on a power-hungry, money-hungry trip, man? How about that? How about calling them slimy, low-life money junkies? Mad men and mad women that will ruin anybody to stuff their pockets with as enough cash as they could carry with them to the grave and beyond. Because, hey, being that they're so rich, they probably got it in with God. Social norms in the banking sector tend to be more lenient towards dishonest behavior and thus contribute to their reputational loss in the industry. <laughs> the study goes on to say, no shit. Hey, good thing you did a study. Oof, I wouldn't have known. I would not have known. But that confirms it because I'm too stupid to read the information and understand it myself. How many more criminal acts by the Wall Street gang and the city of London liars the people have to get in their heads to understand the level of criminality. This isn't just, oh, they're robbing 
the people of the money, they're destroying the earth for their sickness. Remember, 85 cats got as much cash as half the world's population. But they deserve it. They cheated hard to get that money. Here they go again. They're shooting their mouth off. Got a new spokesperson over there in NATO. Yeah, that Rasmussen guy, the little boy that ran away from the guy that dumped paint on him, him, he's gone. New liar over there shooting out propaganda. NATO chief slams serious military buildup in Ukraine. Secretary General Jean Jens Stoltenberg on Tuesday criticized increased Russian military activity inside Ukraine. Yeah, again, not one photo. But hey, the military madmen are as sick as the bankism bastards because they keep selling the propaganda. Don't forget to buy it. It's a business to get into. You could sell it cheaply, get great rewards. Propaganda. Hey, why don't they teach that in the universities? They're just... Kids are getting degrees in nothing. They can't do anything with them. Why don't you have propaganda classes, man? Get a PhD in propaganda, and you could run for the highest office in your country. We are speaking of troops, equipment, artillery, very modern air defense systems. This is a serious military buildup, but we can't show you any pictures because that would breach our security. Yeah, and they're doing a great job, them Russians. Yeah, they just stopped over 4,000 people now, according to the UN report, had been slaughtered by the Kiev government in eastern Ukraine and not a peep. I don't know, but the UN's coming out against North Korea. They're saying they don't abide by international rules. Yeah, over 10,000 wounded. But hey, they're only Eastern European Ukrainians. They got ties to Russia. It's okay. It's okay. Let them die. And the Pope, hey, the Pope came out against that, that synagogue tragedy. Yep, he said it was unacceptable. But not a peep from El Popo about the Palestinians being slaughtered and all their mosques being blown up. Or about the Ukrainian disaster. Hey, Pope, oh, he's coming to the States. Oh, yeah, line up, buy those tickets, step right up. The greatest show on earth, yeah. Another fraud. Yeah, Catholic Obama. All talk, no action. Well, although Obama's going to do some action tonight, big night, open up those gates, let them in, bring in those immigrants, flood the country with cheap labor, can't take care of our own already, we need more, bring down those labor costs to slave landier wages that we should have. Yep, and he's doing it on his own because, hey, it's a dictatorship, man. It's fascism in America. That's all it is. I'm against this. I want to bring home the troops, seal the borders. After the Great Depression, that's what they did. We can't take care of our own. And now he wants to bring in more cheap help brought to you by, and I've been writing about this since 1988, National Manufacturers Association, when they used to manufacture stuff here to undercut the labor market, and by the Silicon Con men. Yep. Those valley guys, yeah, valley girls, valley guys, bring in all that cheap labor, H-1B visas, bring them in cheap, keep your company's profits high, yeah, so you can reinvest it back in stocks and keep the market up. And the news making it even to the back pages, but you read it first in your <laughs> Trends Journal, the uh, summer edition. Remember, don't blame Obamacare, blame I don't care, the obesity problem, Facing America in the world, cost of world obesity crisis is $2 trillion a year. Almost a third of the world's population is overweight or obese. And the report says that it, the obesity cost at $2 trillion is equivalent to 2.8% of the world's economic output. So, keep eating that crap, and you want to see some crap? Here it is. Big story right here in the toilet paper record promoting garbage. 
In Overwall, Pizza Hut tries adventurous menu offerings and a dash of irreverence. Yep. Got a new logo. The flavor is now. Wow! Send me over to a pizza hut. Then they went to Sorrento, Italy, right where my uh, family came from. And there were souls rest in peace. Vika Quince, right near there. By the way, Vika Quince is famous for pizza by the meter. So they did a little taste test there. And this clown they got over there, the head of the advertising agency, Mr. Favat. Yeah who brags that they went over to Sorrento, and here's what they say. They featured ordinary people responding to the new offerings, which, in addition to Peruvian cherry peppers, included salted pretzel and honey sriracha crusts. Honey sriracha, it's Thai. Had to look it up. The punchline is, that Italians don't like what Pizza Hut has done. But then again, quote, they don't like change. Hey, mental midget. Italians don't like it because they don't like change. And he goes on to say change could be scary, but it's also delicious. This goes to show you you can sell anything and you can have a little low life like this boy selling it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Italians don't like pretzels on their pizza. Gee, I wonder why the world is turning obese. Keep sending out that pizza hut. Hey, how about another Big Mac for you, huh? Hey, little Kentucky Fried Chicken. How about a big 32-ounce Plastic thing that you suck when you're walking down the street, filled with crap. Yeah, change. Change you could believe in. Change into something that the mirror isn't going to like to look at. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today.